Coaches, this is Mike Kuchar, Senior Research Manager for www.xandolabs.com. Coaches, we just compiled our special report on quarters coverage and all the adjustments and all the intricacies and all the techniques and fundamentals that go along with it. And uh, we had just released this, and this is just part of our study that we released on quarters coverage. We all know how popular quarters coverage has become, especially with defending spread offenses and open sets and things of that nature. So what I want to do is in just a minute here, just give you some of our research that we found when conducting the surveys. It took us uh, over two months, and we talked to over 500 coaches to get all their information on how they defend offenses using quarters coverage. I think this is a tremendous study. A lot of work went into this, and we did put a lot of time and energy in, in bringing you all the resources that we had to give you some of this. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to share with some split field coverage adjustments okay, that we found in playing cover four. I'm going to start by giving you a little background on some philosophy and secondary techniques, which we all know how important it is. Anytime you teach a coverage, it's so important to understand the techniques and the fundamentals that go along with it. And some of the best coaches that I've played for and that I've known always teach coverage first before they install a defense or in the process of installing a defense. So the first question we had to ask ourselves when we put together this special report is why why quarters coverage? Okay, and what is quarters coverage? Well by definition it's known as cover four. Okay, where the corners and the safeties are responsible for a quarter of the field. Philos you know, philosophically speaking, of course, it's a four deep coverage rotation. Um, teams will play this out of a three or four down front. We've spoke with coaches that played on the four down front, such as Pat Narduzzi, the defensive coordinator of Michigan State. We've also talked to coaches that played this out of a three down front, such as Shat Boyd, the defensive coordinator at Muskingum College, and also at Jim Clements, okay, the uh, head coach at Delaware Valley College. Uh, depends on what you do and what your front is, but this can be adaptable to, to many different fronts. And it's also adaptable to any offensive structure or personnel, which, of course, always a major advantage. Why use quarters coverage? And this is something that you know we had to figure out when we conducted our research. We, we knew it was a popular coverage. We wanted to know why. why. Why are so many coaches using quarters coverage? What does it give you? What are the benefits that it gives you? Well, first of all, it's strong safety run support to both sides of formations. Okay, you know, and, and we did find out that those safeties do not have to be tremendous football players. As long as you coach them up, as long as they understand the philosophy of the coverage, they'll be productive for you. It allows a possibility of nine defenders in the box, which is so important. Anytime you see teams that you know, like to run the football, you're going to always try to outnumber the offense at the point of attack, and having nine defenders in the box, the front seven, along with those two safeties, help you to do that. It's strong versus a QB run game, particularly those that use option, and also matches up well against the four vertical passing game, which is the ideal coverage, as any defensive coach will tell you, against those four vertical pass concepts that so many offenses use today. We felt we'd be remiss in our research if we didn't talk about some of the weaknesses of quarters coverage. And the quick game is always an issue. Okay, and we do have solutions in this special report that we released talking about how to make sure that you stop the quick game. And you know, Coach Narduzzi from Michigan State is one of those coaches that believe heavily in a press technique, which we'll get into. There are other ways that you could talk about how to defend that corner or how to have teach that corner to defend short breaking routes. Play action passes could be an issue as well, and typically no deep defender to handle post breaking routes. Now, there's things you could do. You know, most offenses will tell you that a double post beater or double post route is a typical quarters coverage beater. There's ways you could defend it, and that's all presented in case four of our study. Some stats and some research that we found out when conducting our survey. And again, this went over to we had the responses of over 500 coaches, okay, in which we interviewed, okay, all of which took our survey when we first put our study out. 45.4% of coaches will use quarters coverage in any down, and this is the majority, and I felt like this is a pretty important number. Okay, a lot of coaches sometimes will be a little timid playing too high against any formation, but as we found, if you train them right and you train those safeties to be involved, coaches prefer to play quarters coverage in any, any down, specifically run downs as well. 67.4% of coaches use quarters coverage in first and 10, a traditional rundown. We felt that was a pretty interesting number, regardless of down and distance. So you can use this. That's a universal coverage. Okay, you can use it in any down necessary. When we start talking about the safeties, I think that's a good starting point when we talk about quarters coverage. 69.5% of coaches said they don't have to be the best tacklers on the field. And I thought that was interesting for myself being a high school coach because I always felt like our safeties had to be good tacklers. Well, 69.5% say they don't have to. 
One of them is Coach Shat Boyd at Muskingum College, and he talks about it all the time. Okay, just get your safeties in the right spot to make plays. They don't have to be physical. Okay, tough. I mean, it, it helps to be f tough and physical, but they don't always have to be the best tacklers. Okay, but they must be able to cover just as well as they tackle. Only 17% of coaches felt they have to have be the best tacklers on the field. 69.4% of coaches will play with a strong and weak safety in quarters looks. I think that's important. Whatever you want to call that safety, a strong and weak safety, we, we, we call them a free and a bandit. Okay, whatever you'd like to do is, of course, up to you, but I think it's important that you're able to rotate those guys. Okay, make sure that one, one player is more involved in the run game, maybe to strong side of formations, or if you want to play a field and boundary safety, of course, that's based on personnel and preference. Some footwork variations that we're going to discuss, and that's mostly discussed in this special report. There's, 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 there's five variants that we discussed. A buzz technique, which we're going to show you in a second. A stick step technique, which is done by Pat Narduzzi at Michigan State. A thumper step technique, which is done by James Clements at head coach at Delaware Valley College. A shuffle technique, okay, which is done by Coach Shat Boyd at Musk Kingdom College. And many other coaches. Coaches, it's not just them. You know, we all know coaches is a craft that we get, you know, passed down information from each other. And it's, these are just some of the coaches that we spoke with. And then the walkout technique is something else we got from Adam Waugh, who is a defensive backs coach at University of Louisiana Monroe, who talked to us about that. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to show you some clips of buzz footwork here, okay, which I think is very important, okay, in training those corners and training those safeties to be involved in run support and training them how to move their feet and get down in the box. Coaches, Mike Kuchar, www.xando labs. We're going to talk you through the safety's buzz technique in quarters coverage. Okay, this is used mainly for safeties to recognize run or pass reads in their quarters coverage alignment. First couple clips we're going to show you is from the University of Delaware. Coach Nick Rapone was formerly the defensive coordinator at Delaware. Now he's a secondary coach, okay, with the Arizona Cardinals. Okay, but I just want you to watch the play of these safeties. We'll show you a wide and tight version, how effective they are in diagnosing the run game and getting involved to stop the run game in the box. So our eyes right now should be on two deep safety alignment. See, this safety does a good job diagnosing it. Gets downhill, makes the play. You know, a lot of coaches talk about, you know, can you be efficient as a safety, okay, being involved at, you know, 9 to 10 yards deep in the run game. You see a good diagnosis here by this weak side safety, okay, and he's going to come downhill, make the tackle in the run game. See it better from the end zone shot right up here. But just being explosive. Okay, you see, you know, Coach Rapone talks about keying a guard and tackle. Okay, two man surface to the weak side. He sees it, diagnoses run. He's able to get downhill quick and get involved in the tackle. Now here, I like the footwork of this backside safety. You know, he's going to have almost two dis two displays to his side, okay? So his his he might be a little deeper, okay, in his alignment. Right now, he gets that weak side guard firing off, okay? Second level is going to trigger him to come down on that buzz, get involved in the tackle. At least part of it. I like this because, you know, this, this is a very good vantage point for us to see as coaches. A lot of coaches talk about, you know, reading the high-low hat. You're going to see it here, okay? And there's different methodologies in terms of what you're teaching your safeties. That's just an example of a few. Pretty good pursuit by here. Now, this safety is going to end up having three to one side, so he's going to have to move over. But still, you know, most coaches will train that safety to still be involved in run support weak. Okay, if the ball comes weak, they still have to be involved in making plays to the weak side.
We see the buzz here a little bit. Watch the footwork right there. Buzzes, it's downhill. So coaches, that's just some example of the, uh, just a brief abbreviated version of what we provided in the entire full length special report on quarters coverage. Just again, talking about buzz footwork, how important it is for those safeties to get down, how you train those safeties to get downhill in the run game and make plays. When we talk about corner footwork, okay, there are several variations to train those corners. Okay, we talked about a vice technique, which was used by Adam Waugh, okay, University of Louisiana Monroe, talked to us about understanding the difference whether you have deep safety help or not, and train those corners to be more uh, visual, okay, with their reads and understanding where their coverage lies. A slide back technique, which is done by some coaches in, in, in quarters coverage. A pure back pedal technique or a control pedal technique. A press technique, okay, which if you want to eliminate the short, quick game altogether may be an option for you. And a shadow technique, which Coach Narduzzi talked to us about at Michigan State, which is a very effective technique, okay, when you have those corners like he does to block on receivers and man-to-man. -man. Some interesting fact about the corners. Majority of coaches, 49.8% will align their corners at seven yards inside the number one receivers in quarters coverage, while 39.4% align their corners one yard inside the number one receiver. Okay, so that's pretty important. You want to make sure you protect the quick game and any in-breaking routes in quarters coverage. That inside alignment allows you to do so. We've also found that 42% of coaches teach their corners to read the number one receiver post-snap and not so much the quarterback. That's different in terms of what our train of thought was when we put this research together. We thought that many coaches will train those corners to read the quarterback, read the end man on the line of scrimmage, but a lot of coaches were adamant, especially Nick Rapone, talking about making sure you read the demeanor of the receiver. And Coach Rapone did an excellent job in our entire full-length report uh, addressing how to read demeanors of receivers. Okay, a couple other things we had in this case. We talked about case four run redrill. These are all donated. We were gracious enough to a lot of our readers to donate some of the drills that they teach their corners and safeties, such as the cover four run redrill, the cover four key drill, the force and cutback drill, the crack replace drill. A lot of times in cover four, you're going to have those number one receivers trying to crack on your safeties. It's a good drill to try to alleviate that, and a run read or pass drill, all included in our first case in our special report of our four cases in our quarter special report. Coaches, I just want to let you know that this is an in-depth, this is all part of an in-depth research study on the most universal coverage in football. We all know quarters coverage is popularity. There are four case studies, okay, in this quarters coverage special report. It's the largest study on quarters coverage done to our knowledge. Over 26,000 words and 150 diagrams, including 29 videos featuring, featuring actual game film from programs like Michigan State. We're very gracious to the folks at Michigan State for allowing us to use some of that game film. Exxon Labs researchers reached out to over 500 coaches like we discussed working on this. Okay, and just some of the names, which I'm sure many of our coaches will be familiar with that contributed to this report. Pat Narduzzi, the aforementioned Pat Narduzzi, Shat Boyd, okay, Nick Rapone, and just others, you know, very well respected, okay, tremendously respected coaches in this quarters coverage scheme. And the best thing about it, they buy into it, they believe in it, and, and this is what they do. And this is why we went to them, and this is why we had to make sure that they were part of this study. Coaches, I just want to share some other things with you on, on case two, which is defending pro structures. This is part of our complete package on case two in our quarters coverage special report. Okay, and we talk about split field, field coverage variants. Okay, we talk about all offensive formations can be classified into the following structures. No wide variants, which means no receivers to one side. One wide variant, which is one receiver to one side. Two wide variants, two receivers to one side. Three wide variants, wing variants, and slot variants. We took all of our research and all of our knowledge and all the resources and we classified it into those structures. Some interesting facts about defending single wide receiver variants, pro style formations. 49.5% of coaches will play a quarters concept to two back pro formations. We discussed that earlier. 43.4% of coaches will play their safety at eight yards against three man surfaces, sides to a tight end. Got to get that safety down in the box, closer as possible. 43.1% play their safety at 10 yards. So there wasn't much of a discrepancy between 8 and 10 yards. We did speak with coaches like Darian Doolin, the defensive coordinator at Abilene Christian in Texas, who talked about making sure that his safeties are at 6 yards, and he had the ability to play with his safeties. See a typical two-back pro formation. I know 
there's there's not many coaches that don't know this formation, but I just wanted to show you what we talked about about single wide here. Some adjustments that we detail in our full length special report against pro formations is a read call out of quarters coverage, a club call, a cloud call, and a crack replace, all part of the second case of our special report on how to defend pro formations in quarters coverage. Other pro style structure adjustments that we discussed, a C7 adjustment versus pro twins. That's always a topic of question among coaches. How do you defend pro, tight end to one side, twins to another? A trio adjustment versus pro twins, okay, that we got from Coach Cassidy. Mike Cassidy was at University of Kentucky last year, defensive backs coach. A four flat adjustment versus double tight end. Uh, tight wing adjustments, teams that run the wing tee and single wing. This is a very good coverage to use against wing tee teams. Okay, or double slot option teams you see here in this last bullet point. Okay, veer midline option team. Again, it's all detailed more in the full length report. Case two has 58 minutes of game film. Okay, 45 minutes in case one. Case three has an hour and 43 minutes, and case four has 32 minutes. And case four, we'll talk about in a second, just really relies on the problem routes against quarters coverage. So this is. When we talk about film coaches, I mean, this is a tremendous amount of film on this special report, and we were lucky enough to have all of our coaches contribute some film in which we detailed all these adjustments in depth, okay, and this is something that's just, you know, from, from a coaching standpoint, a tremendous learning tool, and, and see, we all know we're a visual people by nature, and seeing that just, just d does it justice for us. Case three in our special report dealt mainly about defending spread structures and how productive the quarters coverage system could be defending spread type structures. Now when we talk about spread, we talk about two wide variants, two by two sets, three by one sets, trip sets, double sets. We found that 60.4% of coaches teach a 10 yard depth for their safeties versus two or three wide receiver sets. 64.6% .6 of coaches will use a horizontal alignment of the inside shade of the number two receiver against two or three wide receiver sets. So that was a majority. Coaches don't talk about hash in quarters coverage. They talk about lining on people from what we found. 48.5% of those coaches play a Bronco support call, which is outside linebacker force, and this is all detailed in case three of our special report, against two or three wide formations, while 42% of coaches will still play a sky support versus two wide or three wide formations, getting those safeties involved to be the force players. As you see, a typical two-by-two two open formation. Okay, this is out of a pistol look. It's hard to go anywhere without seeing those formations, no matter what league or what level you play in. Some adjustments that we detail in case three of this special report against two-by-two two formations is an alert call. Okay, we also talk about a clue call, which was given to us by Coach Rapone. Okay, now the secondary coach at the Arizona Cardinals talked about this clue call that he used. A palms coverage, which was given to us by uh, Coach Wiles, the head coach at uh, St. Augustine High School in Florida. Kathy coverage, Cleo coverage, lock coverage, cover eight, which was given by Coach Doolin. Okay, at Abilene Christian. These are all adjustments. So we're talking about seven possible adjustments against two by two formations. And the best part about it, coach, is that once your players learn these adjustments in camp in the spring right now, they know how to make these adjustments on the fly. They know how to communicate, safeties communicate to the corners, and you get all worked out pre snap. This is something that I thought was special, which is why I wanted to include it in our special report in case three. Okay, a lot of coaches will talk about, especially those offensive coaches, when you play a quarters coverage team in too high, you are going to get a five-man box. Well, we went back, we researched it, we wanted to say, well, how do, you, how, do you, how do you not get into that defensively? Okay, how do you present the illusion of a seven-man box? Okay, meanwhile, making sure that there's seven players to defend the run game. And what we did is we found that the apex players, outside linebackers, are those fringe players. And those are the ones, those, those are the players that get involved in the run and pass conflicts. And those are the ones that have to be trained to be active against both the run and pass. Okay, so what we did, and we thought this was kind of interesting, we talked to these four coaches and, and a few others about how specifically they train their apex players. Pat Narduzzi, Nick Rapone, Shat Boy, Joey Wiles. Okay, they talk about specifically in this report what they do, how do they train their eyes. 
Okay, Shaft Boy did a great job talking about the quarterback's elbow, which is all detailed in there. Okay, we had a lot of coaches talking about, you know, not so much reading the end man on line of scrimmage, reading the open lineman, getting the run pass reads. Chris Ash, now the defensive coordinator at Arkansas, talked specifically about, you know, understanding play concepts. And if the back is to you or the back's away from you, or if it's in the pistol, okay, or of Otten. Okay, the defensive coordinator out in Iowa talked about how important it was to make sure the formation is understood. So when we talk about trio formations or trips, typical three-by-one formation here that we see a lot of. Okay, when we talk about defending three wide variants now, 49.3% of coaches will play a Bronco outside linebacker force against a weak side of trips formations. 38.4% of coaches will play their safety to the trip side one to two yards inside of the number two receiver while over half of, of the coaches that we polled will play inside leverage on a number one receiver to the side of trips formations because he's assuming that he has no help. Some adjustments that we detailed in case three of this report against three by one formations is a Gilligan coverage concept, okay, which we'll detail, you know, Coach Chap Boyd talked about that, or wrote about that in our report, a trio coverage call, okay, which we're going to get into in a second, a mini coverage, a clap coverage, Okay, presented by Coach Rapone, and a danger coverage, which I think is a pretty good idea as long as you could train your corners to do it. Okay, and Coach Ash at Arkansas talked to us about that and specifically how to train those corners to make sure they understand what danger coverage is and making sure they understand how to read the quarterback and move laterally in what he calls a melt technique. What I want to show you now, coaches, is briefly a three-by-one video. This is presented to us by Coach Joey Wiles, very successful coach at St. Augustine High School in Florida. And Coach Wiles here donated film again on his, uh, his trio concept, okay, defending three-by-one. So take a listen here, please. Coaches, we're going to take a look at Coach Wiles' trio concept, okay, out of his quarters coverage family, which is mainly used to defend three-by-one formations, okay, trips formations, Particularly to the field, you have one, two, three receivers over here. Now, the trio concept is pretty simple. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to be activating this backside safety, okay, to take any number three vertical threat. Okay, now, number three vertical does not have to be this player. Okay, I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but as we know, it could be any one of those receivers, but he is no longer clued in to the weak side of the formation. This corner is going to lock up man to man on number one. This safety is going to play any number three vertical. Okay, so Coach Wiles showed us some clips right now of how he defended that. Okay, so right now this stays number three. He releases vertical, depending on what you're calling vertical, pass linebacker depth, or if you give it a landmark, this safety now has to close on number three. This is number one on a pure little China route or a smash route. Quarterback decides to throw the ball behind him. Okay, and it's picked. I know it's tough to see in the picture. Okay, but that safety is over the top of number three. And he goes and gets it. Same formation, trips up top. Okay, now the outside linebacker is still playing the flat. Okay, remember that outside linebacker, that Sam pushes, he plays number three to the flat. Okay. The corner, just like Coach Wiles did with his palms concept, he plays two to the flat or he's going to play number one. This safety will play number two vertical. Backside safety, great stance. Okay, clue in number three. Okay, now, number three is in. Okay, what's in? Well, if you're defining it as inside linebacker depth because these guys are out of the no-cover zone, then he is free to help out on number one. Now, you're getting a little shallow concept here. Okay, so number one's coming on the shallow. Okay, that corner should make you know in-in-in call to communicate to those linebackers that we're going to have some type of cross concept here. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Ball is overthrown, okay, but you're going to get number two expanding to the flat, okay, so naturally the outside linebacker would be driving on the flat, corner plays number th number one, let's see what number three does here, number three looks like he's vertical, okay, so the backside safety is going to absorb number three, 
Bowls overthrown. So there you have it, Coach. It's just some, uh, uh, you know, an abridged version of what Coach Wild submitted in his trio concept, which we thought was a pretty good idea. Okay, defending in three by one formations. This is this is common. Okay, that meant some coaches will play it this way, locking that backside corner on number one away, especially, you know. But there are adjustments, especially if that kid or that that player is a pretty good receiver backside. Just some other things that are included in case three of that special report. Um, we detailed defending bunch formations using what the box using what's known as a box call. Coach Dave Aranda, uh, very successful defensive coordinator at Utah State. Okay, previously at Utah State, now at uh, Wisconsin. Okay, talks about how to do that. Um, defending three by two empty formations, which a lot of us will see, using a mini coverage concept and a field lock coverage. Okay, which involves that field side corner, and also defending four by one formations. Okay, big now four by one formations. Okay, and how to defend those. Just some things about what coaches are saying about the quarters coverage study that was released very recently. Okay, great job to all the coaches who helped put this presentation together. The information in this report will help make our team better in 2013. Thank you. Excellent special report once again. Great research to help our program enhance our quarters coverage scheme. And just some other thoughts on, on the presentation, okay, and what we put together. And these are just a few of the coaches that commented on this. And, uh, you know, it, it took a lot of time to put this together, coaches, and, you know, we're glad to present it to you, okay. And, uh, and I know it's a little bridge version here tonight, but just some other thoughts that, that you could apply to your program. The final case, which is something that we've not done in the past at XNO Labs, is put together things from an offensive standpoint we wanted to figure out you know we knew what the quarters coverage beaters were okay we wanted to talk to coaches on how they best defend those quarters coverage beaters in the pass game and defending those problem routes so in this case um, we went into defending the double post okay and for various reasons the double post could be somewhat of an issue it puts a strong safety in a bind as you see down here he has to make a decision okay and the, he cannot help the corner now on number one, okay, so the corner really is the one. We show a video uh, of how to defend that, and especially offensively, how teams are, are attacking quarters coverage, okay, by getting inside of that corner on number one. So we, we talk about double posts, and we talk about various coaches that address how they defend that route. We address the three-level flood concept, which is always a question among quarters coverage coaches. How do you handle that? Okay, just philosophically speaking, it does place a high-low stress on a Sam linebacker, that apex player. Okay, he has to leverage the out and the flat route. Okay, we talk about what is the most important route to cover. How do you teach him to be able to leverage those two routes? Because that's exactly what the quarterbacks read in this progression. We address the post flag, that scissors concept. Okay, now we actually had a, a very, very detailed response on this. We had coaches like Chris Ash at Arkansas, uh, Coach Narduzzi, uh, Joey Wiles, a couple of the high school coaches talk about how do you defend that scissors. You know, with a corner and a strong safety, you have to make a pre- or post-snap snap decision on what route they're going to play. Okay, you know, five-step drop, play action, that's a tough route to defend in quarters. We tell you how to defend it, or most importantly, how the coaches that we talk to defend it. We detail the mesh and under concept. Okay, we have a pretty detailed presentation on how to make sure, you know, those linebackers don't bite up, okay, on the quick under, and how to make sure that they're reading the right things and how to get those players involved in, in that high-low stretch, that, that horizontal stretch. And we always talk about the naked puck concept. This is a big, big concept against quarters coverage teams, especially when you have your safeties being physical in the run game. Those linebackers get caught up in the run action and eventually lose their pass responsibilities. Where there's a way you could defend boot and naked concept in quarters coverage, which is all things that we detail. Other things in case four in our complete special report, uh, we talk about training the SAM to be involved in post-dig concepts that outside linebacker. We discuss communication protocols between the safety and corners and that scissors concept and that push call to defend the mesh. I thought that was a pretty good idea, one that I have not explored previously, but all the based on two by two sets, single back sets, where that back is communicating a push call so those linebackers, linebackers could communicate and see things better. Coaches, that's pretty much the abridged version, all part of our special report, okay, our quarters cover special report, which we just released at xnolabs.com. You can get instant access to the quarters cover study. If you like what you saw today, if you're interested in, in, in taking a look at some of these things, we released the entire study on our exclusive membership website, which is called The Insiders, and you can join The Insiders right now and get instant access to this study and all the other studies that we've conducted at xnolabs.com. 
There are other studies such as the zone read concept, the 425 study, the concept blocking system, the defensive line study, plus some upcoming reports that we're really working hard on putting together and getting these out immediately for you, especially during this offseason. We have a no huddle system, okay, that we're putting out. The pistol specials report is in the works right now, getting that out there for you. So this is just part of what you get by joining the Insiders membership at xnolabs.com. Some of our video library includes hours of drill videos from some of the top programs in the country. We have exclusive interviews, one-on-ones. Luckily enough, coaches have donated their time. Okay, coaches such as Mike Leach, Dirk Cutter, who's now with the Falcons, Bobby April with the Eagles, and other college coaches like Ron Zook, Bud Foster, and Tim Brewster. All have been fortunate enough or, or at least been, been uh, kind enough to be involved with us. What we do is research. You're going to get statistical analysis reports featuring all the raw data from every research study we've ever conducted, which is over 500 research graphs. Okay, and you'll get everything, you know, everything we put together, you'll be able to see it firsthand. Okay, full-length reports every week, full-length research reports, full-length clinic reports, full-length drill reports. Okay, the entire versions of all these once you join the insiders. Okay, a 12-month membership coaches is $35.99. Okay, a small price to pay. We all know that as coaches, we try to get our hands on as many things as possible. Okay, uh, I've spent a, a lot of money in this profession doing things for $35.99. You know, we're offering this to you for a special rate. Okay, and we also offer it as a 90 day money back guarantee. Just some thoughts on who has already joined External Labs, Insiders, various programs around the country, including Notre Dame, okay, runner-up national championship team, Oklahoma State, Purdue, the New York Jets, and Seattle Seahawks in the NFL, just to name a few of them, as well as many other high school and college programs throughout the country and throughout the world. Okay, we, have, we do have some affiliates all around, the, all around the world. People are playing football, as we know, and uh, we are lucky enough to have them be part of our External Labs Insider Membership Program. You can get instant access to the quarters coverage study, okay, by just joining right now through the insiders, okay. All you have to do is click the button below the video, okay, and you'll be uh, granted full access to all these things. Coaches, I really appreciate your attention. I hope I wasn't too long. I was so excited to at least give you uh, a glimpse into our research and the special report on quarters coverage. Um, we all know how important this coverage is. We all know how useful it is, especially once you learn the ins and outs of it, which we uh, detailed very specifically throughout the four cases of this special report. Coaches, thanks again for your attention. Okay, this is Mike Kuchar at www.xandolabs.com. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to email me. Okay, email our team, which is uh, which you can contact us on the website.